Hello, it's Paul, 2E0EIJ, or if you're catching on CB 11 meters, 26 Charlie Tango 730. Right, in this video, we're going to have a look at handheld CBs. Now you're thinking, really? Handheld CBs is the 21st century. What's wrong with a mobile phone? Well, if you've watched my previous video, you'll know mobile phones have the good enough points. So, Handheld CBs do exist and they're still being made. We've got, I've got two such, such radios here. This one is the Midland Allen 42 Multi. About £100 or so from any, any good supplier that still sells them. Uh, I think Thunderpole still sells these. Um, just double check on their website. Um, and I also have the Intec H520 Plus. Uh, this is a discontinued model. It no longer appears on any websites that sell CB equipment, nor in Tech's own website. I actually have looked. So, this is discontinued. Both of these come with an optional car adapter, so you can actually convert them to to be used in the car. I have the car adapter for the, for the Midland in the shack, but for the Intech. I have no idea where it may be at present. So, they just transmit on normal CB frequencies. I'll turn on the Intech. So it has a better display. It's charging at the moment. So, it's currently on UK channel 7, which is 27.66125. Unfortunately, in here, it is picking up a lot of noise. Nothing I can really do about that. It's just how it is. Um, so, unfortunately, test, my test that I'm going to do in a little while between both these units is probably not good. Uh, this, this one is tuned to the same channel. Still picking up a bit of noise, but I think it's a little less um, uh, sensitive to the noise. The um, uh, difference between the Intech and the Midland is the Intech has has an auto, an auto squelch on it, although that doesn't seem to work as well as I would like. Well, I don't think it does. The Midland doesn't have that, so I've got to fine tune it. The the other difference is obviously the display sizes. The Intech has a big big display and a big S meter. The the Midland doesn't. Um, all the buttons on the Midland are small. The ones on the Intech are a little bit larger. The to charge the batteries on the Intec, you have to plug the charger into the microphone port. Um, bit of a chew on, because it means you can't actually transmit and use the radio while it's on charge. You can receive while it's on charge, but you can't transmit. There is no drop in charger for either of these. To charge the batteries on the Midland, this battery box does actually come off. It can be swapped for another one exactly the same, you can still get these from some CB suppliers, or you could put a optional AA alkaline battery battery box onto the bottom of the radio. So to charge the to charge the Midland, the charger just pops into the side like that. And the red light comes on. But once that happens, the radio doesn't power on. So that's some, uh, a slight side effect of that. So, but you can still transmit while charging the batteries by simply just swapping over for some alkalines or another rechargeable battery box that's got some freshly charged batteries in it. Uh, neither come with batteries usually. You gotta buy them separately. The Intech takes about six, I believe. Uh, and the Midlands rechargeable battery box takes eight. Whereas its alkaline box takes six. If I recall correctly, I do have the alkaline charger box, battery box, but I don't think I have it on the desk. I don't have it on the desk at present. However, I do have it, and but I don't usually use it. Although, having said that, I actually do have two Intech H520s. One of them doesn't work. One of them's a bit broken because not long after I first got it, it ended up being dropped on a concrete floor and the volume pop broken. It's never been right since. That's on my shelves, um, uh, under some of the stuff that's there. 
Um, on the Intec, you would have no you you'll probably notice if you do have one of these these contacts. Um, the only ones that are of any interest are the three in the middle, and therefore the car kit. The other two on the outside, which I suspect are for charge, they don't they're not they're there, but there was never an optional charging dock ever made for it. So actually no point in that. It goes on the floor. Right. You, the next question you'll probably ask, can they talk to a normal CB? Of course they can, they're on the same frequencies. Um, do they work with the new modes? Well, they do, to a point. However, you've got to tell those radios, because they were made before the change of the rules to allow AM and SSB on the mid-block. You've got to make it think it's operating on the mid-block, but in a different country, Spain or Italy or something like that. But it's not too difficult to do, it's not too difficult to put back. And as long as you don't exceed the 4 watts for AM or, or FM, you're perfectly fine. Those won't exceed much more than 4 watts. They're actually very difficult to modify to put more power out of them. They can be modified for the 10 meter amateur band. Uh, the Intec is probably the easiest of the two to actually do. Um, uh, in the battery compartment, there's a little, little loop of wire, snip that. You know, you've got yourself a, a 10 meter handy handy for um, uh, well, the, F, the FM portion of 10 meters anyway. But bear in mind that does invalidate the type approval if you do that, and you need to be a licensed amateur before you can. Well, so, don't actually mess with your equipment unless you've got the appropriate transmitting license. And don't transmit anywhere you're not meant to. If, you tran if you're not licensed, you transmit on the amateur band, uh, you're very much liable to be reported, prosecuted, that kind of thing. You don't want that, do you? Well, I don't think you do. But the radio hobby's there to be enjoyed. Enjoy it. Um, you can get longer antennas for these handheld CBs. They just go on where the existing antenna goes on. That should increase the range, but again, it still won't be too good. You've also got to bear in mind, battery life on those isn't brilliant. Um, if you want a handheld CB from the 80s, you can find those on eBay. They still work as well. Just bear in mind, you've got to make sure that they're CB2781 if you want to legally use them in this country, which means they'll only work on the 40 UK channels. But that's okay in most cases. So, yep, they will talk to a mobile unit, no problem, no problem. You can get a longer antenna and they'll talk to older equipment. So, there's absolutely a mer no compatibility issues. Whereas if you had a mobile phone, the issues of compa compatibility are generally with the network. If you've got a if you've got a 4G phone and the person at the other end's got a 2G phone, the audio is still going to sound rather poor. But but where both parties have a 4G phone, the audio is spot on. CB, there's no audio codecs to mess with. Just Pick it up, switch it on, find a frequency that's clear, press a button, drop done. Same applies with this. Turn it on, press this button, and you can talk. The next thing for me to do is get them out and get them set up so that one's receiving transmissions and one's transmitting. I will use the Midland to do the transmitting because the Intex batteries don't last particularly long at the moment. If you read my blog, you'll know my Intex H520 Plus is in dire need of new batteries, and you know, it's gonna get done. So, without further ado, let's get these, these radios set up and out on the road. Or at least one. Right, I've got the Intex H520 actually in. Position. I shall just go off into the other room with the 42 and see how we're doing. So you should hear my voice on the on the playback very shortly.
26 Charlie Tango 730 testing. 26 Charlie Tango 730 testing. Okay. I shall be returning back to the camcorder in the shack. Right. <laughs> I'm not sure if that, how well that received, so the only way to find out is if I, if I have a look at the footage. So, we shall see how it got on. Right, when I mean, I've just gone over the footage after filming, I noticed there was a little bit of AC hum on that. I'm not sure whether that's the charger or whether the fact that, I'm, that there's a lot of electrical equipment between me and the and the radio. One way to find out, I'll just turn on this and see. Yeah, that could be the charger. Definitely could be the charger. But it's getting a full signal in here, which is to be expected. And then signal was down when I went through the to the other to the other room. So there's a bit of AC hum, which I believe is the charger, but I don't think there's a lot I can do about that. So we shall see what happens there. So I'm not sure how to cure that AC hum because the cord is running straight past the antenna and I can't really do much more about that. But that's not the test here, the test is actually for range. So I shall crack on with the range test. Right, I'm about to start the range test. See how we get on. Right, I'm now outside the main entrance to the block of flats where I live. I've got the 42. Let's see what happens. 26 Charlie Tango 730 test. 26 Charlie Tango 730 test. Outside block of flats. Right. Oh, by the way, the inspiration for this comes from Gary. 26 Charlie Tango X-Ray 104. So credit to him as well, before I forget, because he did something similar with some bow things. So I'm going to credit him for that. Right, let's now transmit again the, the end of the street. 26 Charlie Tango 730 test. 26 Charlie Tango 730 test. Outside, block of flat. Right, I'm at the bottom of the road. Nice sunny, still got the radio with me, which I've turned off. I've got the squelch fully open on this one. Let's see what happens. Let's transmit and hopefully we might get something. 26 Charlie Tango 730 test test. 26 Charlie Tango 730 test. 26 Charlie Tango 730 test from the bottom of the street. 26 Charlie Tango 730 test. Right, next one. Will be from Prince's Gate in Catrick. Right, next test from here. Prince's Gate, Catrick. Just outside. Need the pet shop and the pound shop. Let's wait for the traffic to go past and we'll go from there. Right, 26 Charlie Tango 730 test test. 26 Charlie Tango 730 test test. Prince's Gate, Catrick. 26 Charlie Tango 730 test. Right, next. I'm going to make them a bit more frequent after this. Right, still on Prince's Gate, but I'm between two buildings, Holland and Barrett and Costa Coffee. So, further ado, radio back on. A bit of the QRM coming in. Deal with it. 26 Charlie Tango 730 test test. 26 Charlie Tango 730 test test. Between Costa Coffee and Holland and Barrett and Prince's Gate. Right, I'll do another one shortly. On the top of Tesco's car park in Catrick Garrison. I've got the cinema above me there. I'm slightly down from where I was, which means which means the signal may not be received, but we can try anyway. Radio back on. 26 Charlie Tango 730 test. 26 Charlie Tango 730 test, top of Tesco's car park in Catrick Garrison. 
26 Charlie Tango 730 test. Okay, let's drive from the other side of the car park. Right, I'm um, now at the other side of Tesco's car park. You can probably just make out Prince's Gate in the background. So, as I do, get some of the test done when all these people have cleared off. So, let's try again. 26 Charlie Tango 730 test test. 26 Charlie Tango 730 test from Tesco's car park. Outside Tesco's main entrance. Right, I'm happy with that. Right. Put the loading bay and bus stop at Tesco and Patrick Garrison. Still far from the tramp from the receiving end, so let's see what happens. A bit of wind noise might be on the transmission, so there's nothing I can do about that, sadly. So turn away from the wind. Nah, no, ain't happening, but we'll just give it a go anyway. 26 Charlie Tango 7 v 0 test. Outside Tesco. That was a small test, so let's, let's leave it at that and I'll do another one in when I get around the corner. Ah, it's still a bit of wind, wind unfortunately, so that's going to put wind noise on the transmission. I've got the wind facing me. I'm not sure if that's affecting the video at all or not either, because the, ca the camera is on the back of the back and front of this thing, but the microphones are on the side. I'm just opposite, across the road from Tesco's petrol station. Let's give it a shot there. 26 Charlie Tango 730 test, test. 26 Charlie Tango 730 testing across the road from Tesco's petrol station. Obviously I can't transmit on the forecourt, but I can transmit here. Nothing saying I can't. I've put some distance between me and the petrol station. Right, next. Okay. Now opposite the Catrick Leisure Centre and uh, the B&M Home Store here in Catrick Garrison. Um, I haven't moved that far in relation to everything, but far enough. Let's give it another try and see what happens up to the end. 26 Charlie Tango 730 test test. 26 Charlie Tango 730 test test. Across from Catrick Leisure Centre and B&M Home Store, Catrick Garrison. I lost a few S points there, I think the battery's on its way out. Okay, next. Okay. Um, around the side of the leisure centre, still got B&M across the road. Just got the paths that go towards the estate where I live. Um, obviously, I can't tell you exactly. What I'm doing, you know. However, still got the radio, still got charging it. Let's give it another shot. Two six Charlie Tango seven three zero test test. Two six Charlie Tango seven three zero testing. Nearby to Catrick Leisure Centre and B&M. In Catrick Garrison. Okay, let's give it another go. A bit further up. Right, I've already got the radio on. Let's try it from here. 26 Charlie Tango 730. 26 Charlie Tango 730 testing. Down the side of Catrick Leisure Centre. In Catrick Garrison. On a back path. Okay, I'm going to go to the top of the path where the houses are and do another transmission. Right, I'm around the back of the houses. Didn't take me long. Radio back on. Move the lanyard out of the way of the microphone, that's not going to help. 26 Charlie Tango 730 testing. Around the back of the houses at the bottom of, of the road. 26 Charlie Tango 730 testing. Let's notice the S meter go down a bit again. I think the batteries are starting to get a bit low, but that might make a difference. Cut by, by a few S points as well as the houses, so we'll see. Right, next one's around the corner. Right then, front of the houses at the bottom of the road. Let's see what we get. 26 Charlie Tango 730 testing one two. 26 Charlie Tango 730 testing front of houses at bottom of road. 26 Charlie Tango 730. It's a good thing CB's license free, isn't it? Otherwise, someone would have had my head by now. But you know, if I was going to do this on, am on the amateur bands, I'd do it with them uh, with another amateur station. In the CB case, I can do it all on my own. 
So, there we go. Right, I'm just going to come around this corner. I'm going to put another transmission out because this is now pretty much almost a direct line of sight to the receiver. 26 Charlie Tango 730 testing, bottom of road. 26 Charlie Tango 730 testing at the bottom of the road. Okay, let's keep walking up and do another one. It's just, now I'm starting to walk up the road. I'm not far from home now. Not far from my flat. Of course, I won't be filming the run up to the flat because obviously that might identify where it is and I certainly don't want that given what's happened in the past, as I explained in a previous video. Um, so, that's why I'm not giving any street names away either. I would do that if I had to, but... Um, what I can do for reference is give you the, give you the, uh, the grid, the grid, the grid square that us amateurs use, which is Indioska, 9-4 Delta Juliet, I believe. I believe that's right, but I can double check it. So, we will go from there. Right, I'm just round the corner from the, from the flat now. Not far away. One more try before I get to the front door. 26 Charlie Tango 730 testing, 1212. Uh, round the corner from from the receiver, 26 Charlie Tango 730. Right, and then one final test. 26 Charlie Tango 730 testing, 1212. Round the corner from, from the receiver, 26 Charlie Tango 730. Right, back outside the flats. 26 Charlie Tango 730 outside the flats, testing one two. Yeah, I can hear a little tiny bit of QRM on that signal. 26 Charlie Tango 730 outside the flats. Right, suppose that should do it. I'm looking forward to seeing what's going to happen. And I will report back. 26 Charlie Tango 730 outside the flats, testing one two. The range tests were done and unfortunately the distant transmissions didn't appear to be received properly if at all by the intake, it didn't seem to break the squelch, um, which is to me shows that using a handheld to handheld with one person sat in the house and the other and uh, wandering around out and about just does not seem to work well on the stock rubber duck antenna supplied with these these radios. So, unfortunately, they don't work brilliantly inside with one person inside and one person outside. Now, outside to outside, I can imagine probably works a little better, but because of the um, uh, nature of the 11 meter band, Half a wavelength is about five and a half meters. The antenna needs to be at least closer to a quarter wave or a half wave before it'll actually be effective. Fortunately, you can get such an antenna from from any decent CB supplier. It's made by Albrecht, um, and it simply goes into the same socket as the antenna supplied by the radio manufacturer. It's just a normal BNC socket. Just take the antenna off put this new longer one on, which is which is long, and then that should improve the range a little a little bit better. Another option is you can just stand on top of a hill. I mean, you've got a clear line of sight all round, but there's no guarantee it's going to work. So, my next little video on the radio subject of range testing is going to be on PMR446 to find out how that fares. That's lower power, uses a um, uh, Shorter wavelengths, which don't pass through much very well, and also it's um, a short antenna still, but the antennas are all right being short on bows because it's a little bit closer to to the wavelength, which is 
it's just slightly above the the 70 cents amateur band and in America it is the 70, part of the 70 cents amateur band so um, uh, the antennas don't need to be particularly long at all but still they're still not that efficient so right now to prepare for that video my MT5050 and my base camp 446 are both now charging so I'm hoping to get that video on as soon as I can but sadly the range tests between the Midland Allen 42 and the Intec H520 Plus didn't yield very good results with the antennas fitted to them and also part of that as I mentioned there was some some uh, issues with um, uh, the batteries on the, um, uh, the Midland Allen 42 and that would have dropped a couple of S points from the transmit, the battery started to go whilst I was out. Uh, not majorly, but I did notice the S to drop, so it obviously wasn't. Because that measures both the um, uh, signal strength and also it measures the power when you press the transmit, so it shot up to four and then it dropped down a bit. So, so unfortunately, if you want, a, if you want um, a handheld to handheld comms with handheld CBs, you need CBs with a longer antenna. I'm going to do another little video where I'm going to connect my mag mount orbiter antenna, which is at the moment attached to my um, uh, SS9900. I'm going to disconnect it from that because I want this to be a fair test of legal type approved equipment for the band. I'm going to connect it to the ground too, and I'm going to do another test with with the um, uh, with the Midland and see how we fare. Unfortunately, transmit is certainly out of the question, so, but we'll see what happens, see if it works better, picks more up. It might do, it might not, but the next video I'm doing is on PMR446 equipment. So, with that, this is Paul, 2E0EIJ or 26 Charlie Tango 730 call sign I've been using today, um, and wishing you 73 and hopefully we can find out how we can get the best of radio for you depending on your situation. 7-3